All right, so this is a character sheet. Yep. Uh, P.S. We're doing some preliminary uh, work on our new Dungeons and Dragons series, and you may eventually see this footage. You may eventually never see this footage. We don't know, but we're about to make something fucking awesome. So. Did you roll that like for real? I totally did. Just a <laughs> six six six. <laughs> Right, I'm good. At these you're things. gonna be a. I'm a demon. You're gonna be an evil wizard. Me and Beelzebub are buddies. We're rolling up a side character for me to play as in the game, possibly, but we're just kind of like teaching me how to play this shit right now. Looks like a bunch of stuff that I have no idea what it is. Character alliance or alignment. You won't do all this necessarily today, too. We already rolled up mine, and this is all, all right. we got so far. Because I haven't created the backdrop to okay. all of this yet. You I'm going to use these backstory. stats to figure out who I want to be. What the guy does. Because if, if I wanted to be Conan the Barbarian, and then my strength ended up being 8, instead of with 16 being there, or 18 being the, the max. Right. Probably wouldn't work. <laughs> not, not a very strong Barbarian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you might want to, like, get your numbers first build something around that right and if all else fails the worst thing you're gonna be is a fighter and who can't roll with that no I mean did, like just hypothetically say I wanted to be a vampire like are, is there a vampiric race in this game that y'all play like I, there uh, is but as, as far as just rolling up a hey I'm a vampire you know right so I roll these numbers and I'm like, well, my guy's got to be bit by a vampire. In, in the way I would do it is it would have to be an evolutionary thing where eventually you either fell in with some, same way with werewolves, like canthropes, anything like that. If you, you know, like you do in Skyrim, where if you get in with a bunch yeah, of them, yeah, hey, you man, you're not going to start off as one, but you're going right, to the call, blood, join you, the blood, you, you know. Okay. <laughs> and there will, to answer the question even more definitively, there will be options for that available okay. in this campaign so but nobody starts off no everybody starts off as a normal whatever race they may be in most like a, cases a white, yeah. i'm a white guy wizard from the highlands and i'm a orc from like you know, barry wanted to be a giant with a machine gun and he ended up a wizard with four hit points and he was really disappointed but right now it's machine but he's gun one of the he's, he's one of the way. most colorful characters in our uh, in our story and he's gotten into it man like he's got the cards and he she can put a light in there. Huh? Machine guns are allowed? No, I'm just saying he really wanted something powerful and he actually started yes. out with something extremely weak. Okay, but now well, he can put a lightning bolt up your ass that'll kill you <laughs> in one hit. So it's like, if you really work with a class like that and develop it, everybody can become a factor. You know, Arthur wanted a ranger, didn't get the numbers. But now he has an elf that's played through an area where he's got better equipment than most rangers will ever find. So, so a ranger is along the lines of... Legolas uh, from Legolas, Lord of the Rings kind of an elf ranger yeah. type yeah. of character, archer. So he's got a he's got a bow that can do more critical damage than most rangers can do with a regular one. So he's he's living the dream and he made it manifest itself. That's important to me to where you know you don't get to be OP right out of the gate. Right, and that's why these a books lot of them will, do a lot of them will, OG, OG, yeah. overpower. Kind of yeah, a lot of them will practically let you pick your stats from the get go. Because the idea is that if that's what they want, you need to let them do that, or they're not going to have fun. And to me, I don't like to give the players that much free reign, especially if they're people that have never played. You know, because yeah. at that point, they don't even know what they're asking for. I know the damage that that can do to a long. It'd be like campaign. starting. I mean, using Skyrim as a. If you started with max stats, yeah, how long, it would how be, long would you actually yeah. play? Every dragon Skyrim's shot. only yeah, boring yeah. because you get to a point where you can one-hit everything. You're like, oh, well, I'm done. Yeah, and then you want to start over, hour, you know? You wouldn't play for more than a few. I'm playing that as a wizard now, and things are one-hitting me, and it's magical again. I was like, man, this is hard. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't use a sword. I can't... And oh, you yeah, can, and, by rules, but I'm playing by rules, these yes. rules in Skyrim. Yeah, so it's it's tight. It's real, And it just shows you what real role-playing Makes and that game experience. is also awesome because it allows you to take that kind of route. If you don't want to, yeah, if I will not use if a I sword, use this pencil, will, I'm going to get better. I'm going to run around naked pencil. and punch everybody in this game. That, that's and you you'll get better. That. At you can beat the game by being naked and punching people. Well, just to <laughs> get you, uh, as well. yes, <laughs> let's. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of true in life, though. You can run around naked and punch people all you want. <laughs> let's see what we you get. You. Win, I already rolled a six six six. So yeah. That means I'm a, I'm a demon, and uh, me and Satan are best friends. Alright, so that. I'm just rolling all three dice. Yep. Die? Are they called dice or die when you have the Dice multiple? would be plural, so you're rolling okay. dice, yes. Oh my god. That's pretty good. A nine, uh, what was that? An 11? 13. 13. 
So you're you beefy, got, whoever you are. You got a 13. Well, that's or funny because I wanted my character's name to be Beefy McLugnuts. All right, so now what was that first roll? That for? was your strength. My so strength. You're you're pretty beefy right now. Now I'm going gate. for dexterity. Dexterity. Which means what? How <laughs> nimble you are. Yeah, how nimble, yeah, and uh, it's the stat you're gonna check when you're trying to sneak up on people and you try to go undetected. Oh, yeah. Again, that's not bad. Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, I've seen a lot worse. Way over average. Way over average. It's over average. I'll write it. Is it the same thing that's happening to you? That happened to the was it your girlfriend or whoever was Where's rolling? Great? She was rolling giant numbers. Yeah, yeah. This is not. not normal. And if you do, that's fine. You know, it's like, hey, you got a good character. So what's the max I can roll on these three die? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. And you're trying to come close to it. That's a thirteen, fourteen. No, 13. What was that? It. Constitution? Constitution. Maybe like your hit points, how sturdy you are. I'm a grown man, is what you're saying. <laughs> or a big lady. You eat a lot of red meat. <laughs> be a big lady. A strong German That's woman. That's actually <laughs> our campaign. I'm a, I'm a big lady. You're a woman, you're a Helga. He's a, a more of an Amazonian, is how now I picture her. Now we're going for intuition? Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. This is whether or not we're... Obviously. Magic user or... Or a bumbling more Mozart, boss. Or, a, or a Hodor, <laughs> rock steady and bebop. You're, you're a Hodor or a not a Hodor. Yeah, seven. You're a Hodor. I'm a Hodor. <laughs> Definitely not. I am a fucking Hodor. <laughs> but what's new? I've always been kind of a lumbering brute. But you know, that, but this fits. I mean, because if you end up being a fighter because of this, you probably yeah, are. Too, though. My intelligence is pretty low, but my wisdom is crazy high. Now, do these numbers so, gain up during the game? Like, do you... your key stat will. In other words, if you're a fighter, your strength will increase. Your intelligence will. Which is more of a house rule, but we've decided. That's an integration just, of fifth edition yeah. rules into second, because second does not offer any way for your stats to increase. Fifth and allows them to increase too much. So I formulated my own thing that's kind of a hybrid, a blur of the two editions, none and too much into just enough. The stat the Goldilocks rule of it. Well the stat increases in fifth edition literally have you a demigod before you're level twelve. It's just stupid. Okay. You know, I mean there's no So this makes it a little more Realistic. No matter how much a barbarian lifts weights, he's never going to pick up a frost giant over his head and throw him over a mountain. And that's literally what those numbers have you doing. Okay. This just makes sure that even if you are 18, you might get to strength near that of a giant. You're not going to pick him up over your head and throw him over a mountain. Okay. It's not overpowered without you just having to first get a great freaking roll. But it allows you to still develop and eventually get into damage bonuses and hit bonuses that maybe you didn't have at the beginning, which makes sense. You, you know, you're going to get better at your key stat. And I'm not okay with that either, because a wizard's not going to get stronger. He ain't working out. He's reading books, you know. That didn't make sense to me. Okay. What if he is working out, though? If, if that it could was be a case, buff wizard. Yeah, He's a buff if, wizard. If somebody wanted to make... And then you have to allow that, in a sense, because there are multiple class characters. If somebody wants to play a fighter mage, yeah, I then I would visit that, and then they would have to tell me, in order to make the system balance, what are you doing? Are you... But they would already have to have those two minimum stats. They would. Right. And then I would right. alternate... Right. You couldn't... I would say like every fourth level you gain intelligence, fourth level you gain like strength. With our, uh, like with our 7-7 seven, seven intelligence, we're not going to be a wizard. Right. No matter what we do. So. Yeah. So. But yeah, what, a lot of different ways wizard, you could work what, that. What's the number a wizard has to have to be, if they want to be a wizard? You I think it. it's 11, 12, it's 11, 11 or 12, yeah, yeah in least. intelligence. Okay. Because they're assuming you've got to be book smart, and at 7, more than likely you're illiterate. Okay. Which is fine. Most barbarians aren't reading... War and Peace under right, the tree. Well, I, I did want to be a bard, so that's not helping. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you can't. It's surprisingly hard to be. Actually, they have some weird And if you don't... I was going to be the first hip-hop bard. Blaine is actually playing a bard, and even though he's not got the numbers for one, he's a rogue who went and bought a loot, and he sucks at it. But that works. Absolutely. That's a great story <laughs> backdrop. And as he increases he up his numbers... Dropped out of Bard College. Yeah, he dropped out of the Bard College before he learned all the initial dozen a day finger exercises. Okay, so now we're going to go for wisdom. wisdom. yeah. And what's the last one? Char Charisma. Charisma, yeah. Which comes up a lot more than you think. Yeah. Wooing nor noble women and Eleven. people at bars. That's not bad at all. What is wisdom? Wisdom is a cleric's key stat. 
And you may have to make wisdom checks on certain specialties, like if you're trying to track something or if you're trying to decipher an ancient language if you're good at that you know you'll want to roll beneath that number to see if you understood it or not okay so there's a few different things that that stat comes into play on all right and charisma yep the final roll you're right there in the zone on the a 12 I mean, you've been between 11 and 13 yeah, on the whole thing pretty much it. that's really not i mean there's been a lot worse to start with so, I mean, I think you're a fighter at a glance, but that doesn't mean that you are. It doesn't mean that you're not a rogue either. And I'm not against us having more than one rogue or multiple rogues, you know, because if you want to get a, if you want to get OP really quick to have all fighters or have all mages, eventually yeah. you're going to end up with something too strong and not enough diversity. That started to happen to us for a little while, but it balanced out. And I think a bunch of different rogues would make for a fun campaign because of the things I could throw in it. You know, yeah, multiple heist. traps, heists. Because yeah. we want to play in character. Plus, we're, we know that we're going to be doing business in and around a community and a kingdom ruled by a king that's not so benevolent. So that's an interesting backdrop for a rogues class. You have 11, so you make the cut for that. Yeah, I almost made a mistake. I got 15. <laughs> The Bard, you have to have a yeah, 12 Dexterity, 13 Intelligence, hmm. 50. Man, they are tough. They are tough. They what, are what tough else? to be. Oh, 15, 15 Charisma. I mean, that's like, yeah. you got to be this That's what uh, Druid's Ron, like that, man. too, man. Druid's Charisma is like 16 or something. It's nuts. But again, it all, it's always important for me to, when if somebody doesn't get the numbers they want, I mean, the book says that just give them the numbers, let them be what they want. I think you lose that on a great role-playing opportunity there because it's like, man, this is the card you were dealt. If you get a hand that's not a full house, why would I give you the cards to make it one just so you can win the game? That's not, you know, that's not fun. Right. And I always, I keep using Barry as an example. I think he was genuinely just freaking bummed when he got the wizard. Especially when he the died the first night. And then, yeah, he, he got dropped to zero, which you can be stabilized. You're not completely dead at that point, but he was just like, man, this sucks. But now, the as a wizard, he's got some amazing things going on. And no spoilers, obviously, but it really opened up the door for him to be so much more than just a sword swinging fighter. You know, I'm not saying that our fighters aren't awesome because they're very unique and we make them that way, but... That's what role playing is, you know. If the actors showed up on the set of a movie and said, "I'm gonna be this," yeah. Well, you know, no, this is the role we picked. You, you're gonna be this. You have to be that. That's what it's all about, and that's what good role playing is. Because, like, you know, if you have to role play a dumb character, for instance, that's a challenge to stay in character because you're not dumb, but you have to. I mean, you're and no, this is dumb like this the whole time you play or anything, but but that would be fun. Like and when I totally called for it. <laughs> I ran straight at a dragon in that last fight, knowing that it could have killed yeah. Ardok. But you know what? That's what Ardok would have so done. He, you zapped me. Nature. I'm pissed, and you're gonna pay for it. And I didn't die, but I did something really cool in the battle. That was Whereas my character's equal at strength of yours, but often lets people go. Yeah, and doesn't kill people she might and sometimes he's upset with our doc for rushing right in yeah. like our incident at the watchtower that day I yeah. you were, thanks a lot our doc that could have been handled better you know so it's a system of balances and you get experience too for playing in character so at any rate or well, what's next now with these numbers you pretty much have to decide what you want to be and we don't have to do that immediately we can go down the list here adding in your ability bonuses that you got from these numbers because they'll be pretty much the same no matter what you pick but it wouldn't hurt to be thinking about it if you were thinking bard then think again well <laughs> not necessarily maybe you maybe and another failed bard Maybe you and Blaine are going to start a band I don't together. Even, honestly, I don't even know what classes are. I know bards because of the bard's tale. I know I know certain class names because of video games, like a paladin. What the hell's a paladin? A paladin is a holy warrior, noble and heroic. Also requires some pretty macked out. A 17 charisma you got to have to be a paladin. I mean, yeah. you got to hit the dad gum. But you get your own 7 song. 11 on that, man. You got to just paladin, nail it. Paladin, paladin. Yeah. Where do you roam? But you could be 
What's something no one's ever been in and actually, any of your that games? That being said, if he's going fighter, I don't want to like to make this too long. And again, I'm not. We're I kind of wish I had seen this before. I guess because there are so many subclasses of fighter up in this bitch. Yeah. That are just would really make it interesting. And I've had this, and I haven't been able to read it. You Half know, it's just subclasses. Sure. Of, and I hate that I've missed yeah. out on that. You have the wisdom to be a cleric. But he's a drunken cleric already. Now maybe we have two drunken clerics. I don't well, know. Again, out. Are we making me a character for the full-time mission in the game? Or are we just doing a little side action here? It's not like we're up picking something for the real game right now, are we? Not necessarily, yeah. I mean, it's, it's whatever. Just kind of learning how to do it. The numbers, you might want to, might want to lock it in. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, I would definitely <laughs> lock this in as your numbers, but... Well, I mean, I'm, I wasn't really planning on being a character every every yeah, yeah, yeah. every week. You know what right. I mean? I, I would show up and be situational. But when you show up, don't you kind of want to be a badass? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't even be... I, w I wasn't thinking I'd be the same character every week. You know what I mean? Well, like, true. the you first week I show up and I'm somebody that's, that's in the, b the bar, you know, helping y'all out, giving you a map or some shit. And then the next time I show up, I'm okay. a, a witch in a cavern somewhere. You now know that I mean? you bring I'm not, that up, let's consider true. this thing. Consider this. Because this is super easy, and this is fun because it showed you what's what, and I think you just learned more about the game than you knew before. Definitely. But if you truly just want to take on the role of an NPC at any given time, we have those in spades. I mean, how many NPCs are going oh. with us right now? Three or four? Yeah. Three? Four if you count that orc that had to go home to get some help. <laughs> And these are the kind of people that I can say, the Ghost Riders. you're him tonight, you right. know, and you can just kind of get to, you'll already kind of know what's up with it, because you'll already be knowing the story, because you're in on Again, this. Again, you're just handing me a character sheet. Like, yeah, and it won't be nearly this you complicated. You are now Beetle Farb, the butcher. Beetle Farb. Okay, Beetle Farb. I am Beetle Farb, the butcher. You'll have your armor <laughs> class, your Thacko, your hit points, your weapon set, any other abilities, and you won't really have to worry about any of this other no, stuff. No, and I won't have to worry NPC. about living or dying as an NPC because it's not something I'm carrying on to the next. That's true. Game. If you were like, like a recurring, a, I'm NPC a wild card. I'm a, you died, that would suck. I'm a wild and you card. You may have more fun with that because you're a ham anyway, and I, you're you're you were born to play stuff like this. If only I knew math. Then you that's may have... Uh, math is my, See, the my thing downfall. is, technically, that's his job. Yeah, it's, it's all my problem. We get so into they help it keep we, me in we, line yeah, if we, I make a mistake, and that's we great. We got excited enough about it and learned enough about it over the course of time that we participated in that, but technically, that's what he's here for. To keep all the numbers you got. Yep. Yeah. And then, you know, I've got my screens that have got everything. You know, I'm playing behind this thing. Right, that's some of the stuff I bought at the Google there. Do you yeah, see? it's uh, basically uh, a cheat screen, sheet. Yeah. All the... Now, lots of weapon damages, saving throw numbers, calculated Thacos per class, thieves percentages, so I can tell you I roll oh, the, the dice. Thacos. To hit armor class zero. This is a number that's worked against the armor class to see if you hit or not. So if you haven't, like say, my barbarian has an armor class of two because he's pretty well done up in splint mail. Your character has a Thacko of 17 because you're a level seven. Is that seven. like hardcore chain mail? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, and Mark was going to make one like out of beer fish cans. Scales. It's tabs over tabs of just pieces like of metal. Fish scales, like fish scales. Like fish scales, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's say you had a Thacko of 17. My armor class of 2, I would deduct from that. You have to roll over a 15 to, to hit you. And what that means is, A, it would be hard to do. B, if you rolled a 14 or something close to it, I can say you hit me, but it doesn't penetrate the armor. I don't blow. take damage. Right. Or if you roll a 2, you swung and looked like an idiot. You, you didn't dropped even your close. <laughs> it's up to me to, to color that in for you. Right, right. You know, the details. And a good DM will do that every time. A bad DM will, oh, you missed. No, you know, they won't really give you any details. You want to make it as real as you can for the players. And we do hit location. You hit him in the left foot, you know, so that in your mind, just like a video game, you see what you just did you in your mind. You don't use that one, do you? Though? I don't. I made that my... one's broken. That's the left. That's in the left foot. Like what the problem is, it always lands on. They did. Uh, on the they did left arm and left hand, right foot and right leg. There are so many right and left appendage options that. It's like getting and the a body's on there like once. Yeah, a chest is on there the one time. Of, I'm gonna hit your chest way before I'm gonna hit your finger. Yeah, 
Uh, it doesn't mean I don't want a chance to do that, but I basically made a 12 hit location thing where none of them happens twice, included neck and groin, because I think those are huge. A lot of groin hits. And, and it's great when you do, because like, oh, Jim has hit this guy in the groin three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she hit this big dude in the testicles with a polearm glaive like three times straight. So I'm like, man, you've completely carved his dingus off. <laughs> and that really added flavor, because she's a woman, you know? So I was like, man, she's cutting his beans off with this oh halberd and you know that that's better than just <laughs> you hit him for 10 damage what do you do so chopping you know, his beans off with a halberd is classic that, comedy now i wanted to see enough of what we're doing systematically to where if somebody is watching this for the intent of learning, learning to play it. now you won't learn everything from it but i mean just to get a better idea of the flow of it to where maybe it's not so intimidating for them to get into and uh, you know a lot of people in big bang theory i kind of blame for this and don't get me wrong i like the show but the DM doesn't roll everything. You right. know, if you've ever watched them, like when they're playing on the show, the dungeon master is rolling for everybody. I don't know how it works. You roll your own yeah, dice. Some, 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 and some people maybe do that, but. I feel like it's becoming a minority. Well, and there's a lot of DMs, too, that, you know. I want to fucking roll in dice. Yeah. You feel I want like more, more control. Part of the action when it's you just like that, playing craps. Yeah. This is my role. Yeah, exactly. Well, you that's your attack. You know? I'm in charge of these dice, and I'm going to make them do what I want them to do. Get out there. If I don't make this hit. Then he is going to get me back, own. and I'm going to die because I'm I have hardly any hit points left. Do I get him? Ooh, boom! You busted him in the nut. And then I roll the hit. I roll the hit locator, and it says neck. And because of the double damage, it kills him. And then is this I say, twenty sided die. Yeah, that was the biggest. And I say, you yeah, I say, you, it will it'll do double damage because you made did a critical strike. I totally did. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> so how much more drama did that have because <laughs> I rolled it? And then I would tell you as the DM, you connected with the neck if that's what I rolled, and his head was just removed. Blood is gouting in thick black curtains from the open veins, <laughs> and he collapses in a heap. You are victorious. Moving on to the next guy, you know, she's like, mm, yeah, dude, I got him. Or the other side of that, I could say, oh my god. You roll a one, you swing so hard and carelessly that you miss. Your sword slips out of your hand and falls at his feet. He kicks it to the side. You're going to have to expend another action to pick your weapon back up now. And while you're doing it... He just chopped your head he off. He just hit you upside <laughs> the head with a club. So right. <laughs> that'd be the complete polar opposite Ouch. of, you know... So yeah, people need to roll their own dice. But as far as the uh, backdrop for the plot, and I know what's going to happen first, but we're not going to dive right into it. You know, with our original one, we dove right into the story. There was nothing wrong with that. Uh, and we even had an option to not, because when we got where we were going, yeah, not. we didn't have to take the job that we were offered. Uh, I, I would also say that I want you to be like a Crypt Keeper. Like, you introduce each episode as, like, this happened last week. You know, you're doing whatever your voice mm -hmm. is that you use as the, the DM. But, like, that's, you're the, it we, all revolves around Andy. We and also and flirted like, with the main uh, narrative of the show. With the Talking Dead story. idea, because after we play, whether we, we want to we or sit not, around and talk about we it. stand around for 15 minutes. Hey, can you believe that happened when that ogre farted and the boulder fell on the map <laughs> and it was fucking awesome? You're going to sit there and talk about it, just like they do, because everyone loves the show so much that they can warrant having a show to talk about the damn show right when it's over. Talking D. Now, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying that we're that good, but I think we are because the story is that good. It, we don't just pack up and leave. We're like, man, could you believe when he got in bed with that woman at the end and then the dude shot him in the ass with the arrow and then a gargoyle <laughs> flew out of his butt? Can't believe it. And then you just want to go back over all that. 